So you want to know how to study for the California Pharmacy Jurisprudence Exam, aka the CPJE? Well, watch this video, find out. So first of all, before I begin this video, congratulations. Chances are you are watching this video because you probably graduated pharmacy school and you're looking to take this exam. Uh, if you don't know what the CPJE is, um, it is one, it's the California law exam that you need to take in order to be a pharmacist within California. Now, why did I put law exam in quotations? Well, anybody who's taken this exam knows that it's very, very clinical. It's definitely, it's really, really hard exam. A lot of people actually fail. So if you're one of the few that actually um, are, is watching this video because you failed the exam, this is also for you. And so maybe you're a student, you're probably wondering probably one of the following. Do you have any advice on passing the CPJE? How do we prepare for the CPJE? And so today I just want to give you my story about how I prepared for the CPJE. And by the way, I'll leave some links below. TLDR Pharmacy has a great post on how to study for the CPJE. When I took the CPJE exam many years ago, <laughs> uh, I only, I literally bought almost every single resource out there. So I had RX Prep, I had the RX Prep questions, I bought the RX Prep like law book, uh, I bought pharmacy charts, and I bought the law book at the time too. I'm here to tell you that you probably don't need all these resources, right? And I'll tell you a story of about how I studied for the CPJE. And here's the thing, when you're studying, like I remember during that time, it was really, really hectic, right? Time is of the essence. Um, your court, like I remember corporate pharmacy wanted me to take this exam as soon as possible because they didn't want me to get stuck in the review period because they needed pharmacists, right? When you get stuck in the review period, I, I can't remember how long it took, but it takes like sometimes a few months for them to start, um, to start, to start the process over again. So if you don't know what the QA period or whatever they call it, uh, it's basically when they cap off the exam to 400 people and they just review uh, how people are doing on the exam to make sure that it's quality control, right? I remember during the time there was all these rumors about people failing the exam, right? So at the time, I think you could only fail it like three or four times. And that was a lot of pressure. And you just hear so many rumors about this, this exam being wicked, wicked hard. I remember at the time I had to work in the pharmacy too. And so that was very, that was kind of stressful, but it wasn't impossible. It was very manageable at the time, being able to study for my NAPLEX and, um, and work in the pharmacy, right? You just have to have really good time management and just really set out time to just focus and study. At the time we had to wait for our ATT. If you don't know what ATT stands for, I actually got to look it up for a second. Authorization to test. <laughs> we had to wait for our ATT and then do all these things too, like get a live scan for our CPJE and stuff. We had to do all these things in order to be able to sit on the exam. And um, luckily I had a really good, like a really good train, like intern trainer who really, um, who really just helped guide us every step of the way. Cause it was a really, really, really stressful period in my life. And you gotta realize too, the sooner that you became a pharmacist, the sooner you would make more money. Right. And I don't know if you ever got that, but like, I saw that I saw people's ATT like trickling in and stuff like that. There's some people getting licensed before I was, they heard back sooner than me. And I just remember this, this tons of tension of like, oh dude, I felt hella FOMO at the time. So when I was preparing for exam, I would literally go through RX prep because I think RX prep is a really great tool to kind of relearn anything over again. And if you came from a pharmacy school like mine, where, you know, some of the professors weren't that great at explaining things, I could go back and just really understand it. So RX prep is a great resource. And I think even better was actually the question. So I would literally drill through the questions over and over and over and over again until I would get 100% right. You know, as I got closer, because I knew it was a very clinical test, right? Um, I actually did, I bought all the law stuff, but I didn't have enough time to review it. Right. And I think that's the thing. Like if you're to spend a lot of time on things, um, 
spend the most time on on learning the clinical exam right because at the end of the day you have so many hours you have to really strategize what is the best way to do it and then as the exam got real got a lot closer um i actually have my pharmacy charts i'm not sure if you can see it this is a resource which i highly highly recommend um not only like not because like if you can't see it um basically there it comes in really condensed notes and this was really 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 great like let's say if i was weak at a certain subject like uh cardiovascular let's say if i wasn't really good at that i could literally go through it over and over and over and rep it out and uh rep out rep out those questions and pharmacy charts so if there's two references i really recommend it's actually pharmacy charts and the actually the rx prep questions because you do need to get familiar with the questions too that you're going to be asking also i just want to let you know california board of pharmacy they also have a list of questions too, a sample test which will get you it's not really good for the clinical aspect but it is really good at getting used to the type of questions on the exam so but i remember as soon as i i got my att i was like dude i gotta take i gotta take this right away so literally most people take their naplex first and then their cpje i was like you know what like all the locations were filled up because everybody was trying to do it all at once and so i was like you know what fuck it i'm gonna go <laughs> at the time i was like in woodland hills and i drove all the way to Bur i drove to burbank to take my cpje i drove all the way down to san diego to take my naplex right and man i honestly coming out of it i just felt like i totally bombed it and i remember like as soon as i booked everything i only had like a week or two or something like that some crazy amount of time and so i was just really just cr cramming just making sure i was sharp on all my knowledge so pharmacy charts really really helped me kind of with that cramming and just reviewing the questions like learn a subject keep on going re read it over and over again and then it's just straight up almost memorization right and so when when it came time to take the test i remember sitting in there it was a really cold ass room i don't know about you but make sure to dress pretty warm because it does get kind of cold in that testing room um but I remember coming out and was like, dude, there's like literally what everyone said was right. There is no logs. <laughs> there is no law portion on this exam. I was really glad because I didn't really have enough time to study for a law portion at all. I literally bought all those materials and I didn't read a single, single word. You know, there was probably like two questions on my exam about that. And so I remember coming out and I was like, shit, I honestly feel like I, I i bombed it because here's the thing about the cpja i don't know if it changed or anything like that but with the cpje they don't scale or anything like that and so like your score is literally what you get i think there's like 70 something questions so i remember i was like fuck dude now i have to wait for my results and i remember my heart pounding every single day because i would see other people get licensed and then I would go through my own FOMO and feel like I was like missing out because everybody else was getting licensed. Like they heard back and they're like, oh shit, this is awesome, right? And then I'll always remember this moment. I remember I got a call from my dad. And for y'all that don't know, my dad is no longer here. But I remember he was like, hey, you got this letter in the mail. I was like, oh no it's my freaking results so the first thing he uh tells me is like hey looks like you passed your naplex right i was like okay that one was easy before it got really really hard and i was like okay that one i i kind of knew that i would pass it because at the time no one failed their naplex right and then i remember i was like well what about my what about the law exam and he opened it and he told me like you passed i was like no you're fucking with me like I, I i i literally said that to my dad i was like you're fucking with me you're joking you gotta be joking He's like yeah you passed with an 85 i was like oh shit i made it right so um yeah it was a lot of and i think that's the thing right if i were to and it felt so good because literally that night i i just went down to san diego with my friends and just chilled out there and had a great time honestly celebrating but if I were to recap everything, 
this is what I would recommend for a lot of people after doing some more and more research about how people are studying for it now. So I would do three things. Pick up RX Prep. It's a really, really great resource on kind of understanding the whole macro level and kind of reteaching you all those concepts. Just only go through that once. As it gets closer, use pharmacy charts to kind of drill, 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 drill. I think those are some of the best resources, whether you're cramming for exam, if you're if you're a student right now, also a really, really great resource, right? So do that and then drill with questions, not only with the RX prep questions, the questions provided by the California Board of Pharmacy, just to get used to the type of questions uh, that they ask, right? I'll leave all the links below for every single resource. And like I said, TLDR has a great resource on the CPJE. I would highly recommend that you check it out there too. But let me know in the comments, what is your experience with the CPJE? And if you are taking it, how are you feeling? What are your biggest fears about it? What are your biggest questions? Let's start a discussion below. And as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure to hit that bell so you stay tuned for all the pharmacy videos that I will be releasing onto this channel. Anyways, I will talk to you later. Take care. Good luck if you're taking this exam. And I'll see you later. Peace.